Ah. Uh, hey guys, it's Cute Fuzzy Weasel. Welcome to the layer. I'm gonna call it the layer and not the bunker because something about I don't know the words bunker and layer. Bunker doesn't sound as homey as lived in. You know, I like I like the sound of layer. It makes it sound. All right, well, I'm gonna be honest. None of the words sound very good, but it's what I gotta work with. Got my big fusion power generation thing right there and all my computers, and it's it's terrible. I hate it down here. I wish I didn't have to be down here, but this is what we have to do to stop the curve of the virus, or to flatten the curve of the virus. Stay inside as much as possible and just ride this thing out. Unless, of course, you're Tom Bennett, some idiot from Australia who thinks that viruses aren't real. Yes, this episode, we're doing an actual troll and not a personality quiz. Hopefully this thing doesn't get bogged down in the... Honestly, finding these people is very difficult. I've had quite a few questions over the last few weeks, so I'm making this for my friends to clear a few things up. First and foremost, something you should know, you cannot catch a virus. Uh, yeah, actually, you can. That's how they spread. And why can't you catch a virus? Because it's impossible. So why is it impossible to catch a virus? Question. Did you just add two extra steps to get to your point? Why can't you catch a virus? Because it's impossible. Well, why is it impossible? Isn't asking why it's impossible the same as asking why can't you catch a virus? Of course, the answer to both of these things is it's not impossible and you can catch viruses, but hey, you know. A virus is alive. Is a virus a living thing? Yum, yum, yum. Wait, wait, hold on. A virus is alive, is a virus a living thing, and then some video of a baby going, no, 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 no. So far, this is the idiot conspiracy theorist version of jingling your keys at somebody. So how is it that people think that you can catch something that is not alive? A lot of the reason people don't consider a virus to be alive is because a virus can't really self-replicate or eat anything. All a virus is, is some DNA or RNA inside of a kind of a little lipid shell. And with the coronavirus, the shell is dotted with all these different little receptacles that land on certain cells, and those little receptacles tell the cell to bring the virus down inside the cell, where the DNA then attaches itself to the DNA of the cell, and causes the cell to replicate a whole bunch of other viruses. Eventually, the cell fills up with all these viruses and bursts open, spreading more of the viruses. So it's not technically alive, but it's also made of living material. It's kind of a gray area. Everybody knows you never go full retail. I'm gonna skip over the rest of his media inclusions because one, they're incredibly insipid, and two, I don't feel like getting a copyright strike because of this idiot. Now, I know a lot of people are genuinely concerned, so that's why I'm making this, to hopefully cure some of the unnecessary fear and stress. No, you're doing this because you're some kind of asshole, and you're either drunk off of Dunning-Kruger effect, or you enjoy manipulating people. And just so you don't think I'm sitting here making stuff up, I'll quickly tell you my background so you know how and why I'm telling you these things. I was one of those kids that could read and write before I even started school. Okay... I knew my 1 to 12 times table before other kids even knew how to open a book. I won academic scholarships in two expensive private schools. I did six years of science. Okay, what kind of science? Which included medicine. Okay, what kind of medicine? Because this shit right here is not medicine. I did six years of natural health and medicine. And I spent three years solely looking into the nature of viruses, bacteria, protozoans, fungus, and parasites. You spent three years on a subject. And you know nothing about that subject. Something about that doesn't even seem possible. I mean, you'd think after three years, you'd pick up on something, anything. It's like even if you spent three years trying to learn how to make knots, only you were using toilet paper instead of string, you'd think eventually, eventually, you'd pick up that you can at least kind of make a knot out of toilet paper. You'd eventually figure out, oh yeah, I can make a, a basic knot out of this tissue. But after three years, I can only assume that by study viruses and bacteria and fungus for three years, you meant just like stare at a table and go, well, I can't see them. Therefore, they're not there. As a practitioner, I treated myself and a number of other people by doing... 
successfully long term for conditions of the same. And when I did my last IQ and aptitude test, I was taken into a separate room and I was interrogated to see if I cheated. And more than anything, unlike Google and Facebook, I don't have vested financial interests dictating what I can say. And the people who think the earth is flat have no vested financial interest in what they're saying, but they are also wrong. The fact that no one is paying you to say something does not mean that what you're saying is right. I could sit here and say, hey, um, fucking, I don't know. It, it, now I put myself on the spot trying to find out a, a good enough lie for the example. Um, light is made of leprechauns. No one is paying me to say that light is made of leprechauns. Therefore, you can trust me when I say light is made of leprechauns. You see, here's, here's some of my um, personal credentials. When I was a kid, I scored 137 on an IQ test. So, light, I mean, leprechauns, man. It's leprechauns. And look, I have successfully treated animals and people long-term on medical. So, light, leprechauns. I have done my own physics experiments in school. Therefore, light is leprechauns. No one is paying me to say that light is leprechauns. So you can trust me when I say that light is leprechauns and you can catch it in a bucket. The only difference between what I'm saying and what this guy is saying is that if you spend all day next to a lamp with a bucket trying to catch leprechaun lights, you're not going to unintentionally contract a fucking illness that'll eat your lungs and maybe kill you. And I don't have shares in vaccine companies. So what is a virus anyway? Well, a virus is nothing more than a solvent. A solvent? The fuck? You spent three years on this topic and you think a virus is like a little glob of Drano? I spent three years staring at pieces of metal, grass, and different samples of dirt. And I never saw any kind of virus and I can't do an Australian accent. I can't. I started going into like Boston thing and then I, I started going like I started out decently Australian and then it started going into like Boston, Chicago and then I think I ended British. Solvents are created within the cells of the body. This is why you cannot catch a virus. Viruses are created cellularly. Now the body can create hundreds of thousands of different viruses at any time. So why does a cell need to create a virus or a solvent? Yes, please do tell us why a cell needs to create Ebola. Created in response to the built up toxicity that we have in our bodies. Well, I'm sorry, Timmy, but you what contracted the polio? Shouldn't have been so toxic inside ya. So how does a cell become toxic? Well, a lot of people have spent a number of years putting shit in their minds and shit in their bodies. A hyper genius that studied medicine, ladies and gentlemen. Very good description. Yes, yes. Way to back up your claim. They just, they got shit in their minds and shit in their bodies. Therefore, a virus isn't real. A lot of people think that it's just totally fine to eat supermarket food, you, know, you microwave it, just get flu shots injected into you every year. Oh yeah, this guy's also an anti-vaxxer, so let's just keep like shoveling dirt into this wheelbarrow. It's drinking tap water, you know, people that go after organic food are tinfoil hat wearing boogers. I mean, I'm not gonna call you a tinfoil hat wearing booger if you prefer to go after organic food. Um, I will say that any organic food that you buy from outside of the country gets sprayed with chemicals before it enters into the country anyway. Well, how do you know this? I spent seven years looking at a table to see if I could see tiny bugs. I know this because I used to sell it. We Back at one of my jobs that I took to support myself through college, I worked at a high-end grocery store, and yeah, the organic produce that we got in sprayed with chemicals. It was a pest control because organic produce from another country could have weevils and other stuff in it that could spread if we didn't kill it before it got to the store. So yeah, organic produce has chemicals on it anyway. But again, the difference between liking organic food and being this guy is that if you want to spend $10 for a head of cabbage, that's on you. If you don't believe that viruses are real, you can kill people. The thing is, is that nature doesn't care what you believe. You can believe that any of those things are true, but nature doesn't care what you believe. Yeah, that's why if you're an idiot, 
and you follow this guy and you catch COVID-19, nature's not going to care that you think COVID-19 isn't real. You still might get pneumonia and die. So a lot of people have asked me, what is a flu? Well, a flu is a viral detoxification or a cleansing. A cold, on the other hand, is mostly bacterial. No, they're both viral, and it's got nothing to do with detox. Your body already detoxifies itself just fine, assuming you have a fully functioning liver, kidneys, and spleen. It does everything you need. And for the most part, what needs cleaning out of the cells are environmental toxins, such as heavy metals, plastics, uh, any kind of environmental industrial pollutants, the chemicals that you use in your home to clean things with, things you put in your body. Shout out to everybody else who drinks dish soap. Now as for plastics, yeah, there are actually microplastics in the environment and pretty much everybody in the world has microplastics in their body. Thing is, we don't really know what they do yet. I personally suspect they're not good. I think. I don't think having bits of plastic in you is a good thing. However, I do know with some confidence that COVID-19 is not the answer to microplastics. And so on and so forth. Now, a virus does not attack cell tissue. Not directly? I mean, it does inflate a cell until it bursts and literally releases thousands of new viruses all over the place, but... Normally, what does the most damage is your own immune system's response. See, if your immune system figures out that you have some kind of viral infection, it can overreact in what's called a cytokine storm, where the immune system just goes apeshit on everything around it, including healthy tissue. So, no, a virus does not directly destroy tissue. It's the immune system reacting to the virus that destroys that tissue at least in the case of COVID-19. Now, there are some viruses, I think Ebola actually does directly liquefy stuff, but I'm not an expert, so I'm not going to talk about things that I don't fully 100% understand, you know, like this dipshit should. What happens is that as a virus, which is a solvent, breaks down the toxic residue within a cell, it creates essentially a toxic waste. So our cells make Drano, and then the Drano creates toxic waste. Six years of studying this. So that's why you'll feel shitty if you've got a viral infection. And what can happen is if there's a lot of shit in your cells, you're going to create a lot of toxic waste as that virus breaks it down. So what happens is that if there's too much of it, it can actually cause cell damage, and in extreme cases, it can cause cell death. I'm going to try and be charitable here and say that you don't also believe in spontaneous generation, but this sounds a whole lot like you believe in spontaneous generation. So there is actually one way that you can catch a virus, and I'm going to tell you what that is in a minute. But you've got to learn a bit about the nature of viruses before I can tell you how you can catch one. No, 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 no. How about you go learn something about viruses and then come back and issue an apology for all the unintentional deaths your video might actually cause. But millions of people are dying and you can catch some bat flu off of a counter or by being around your friends. A virus is specific to specific cells in the body. So somebody with hepatitis, for example, which affects the liver, does that affect the heart? Do they have lung problems? Do they have brain or gonad problems? Not so fun fact, hepatitis can also cause skin problems and blood disorders. So, yeah. Likewise, a virus that attacks the lungs will not affect the kidneys. The virus COVID-19 affects cells in the throat and gradually migrates down into the lungs. However, currently there is some evidence that COVID-19 can also cause health problems and gastrointestinal problems. Both issues have nothing to do with the lungs, other than that's how the virus gets into the body. It's because the virus is specific to specific cells in the body. So because a virus is not transmissible within your own body, it should make sense that a virus is not transmissible between people. SARS-CoV-19, which I've actually been told that saying COVID-19, you know, annoys people. So let's say this. Coronavirus, there, coronavirus is highly contagious and can easily spread between people through talking and breathing. You don't even have to be coughing to give someone this disease. That's why when you social distance, you're not just helping yourself not to catch the virus, you're helping to not potentially spread it. Ah, but I'm sorry, viruses are Drano, and vaccines are big government trying to implant you with microchips, and the guy's probably a flat earther too, so I'll just throw that out there as well. This guy ran for government down in Australia, and, you know, thankfully, 
he uh, he failed miserably. And it's especially impossible for a virus to make the jump between species. Zootonic viruses, at least I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not 100% sure. But zootonic viruses, they're rare, but they're not impossible. I mean, shit, the bubonic plague was a zootonic virus. This is why you can't get an avian flu, a swine flu, a bat flu, a monkey flu. No, you can get all that. But let's, let's be kind to the man. After all, he only spent three to six years studying this. I mean, that's not enough time to get the basic shit down. Or any other flu that affects an animal, except for one way, and we will get to that. So how is it that a number of people can get a virus at the same time? If it is created within the cells, how is it that a lot of people can get it at the same time? Well, if somebody at home has a cold, or somebody at work or at your sporting club, does everybody in that place get a cold? Oh my god, will you just give your bullshit answer to the question, please? You know that the answer is no, despite the fact that a bacterial infection can be contagious. So why won't everyone in the sporting club or everybody in whatever get the same cold if someone has a cold? Well... A lot of them will, but some people might be immune. Some people might have a slightly stronger immune system. Some people might catch it, but be asymptomatic. Some people might just not breathe any of it in by pure chance. And why can a bacterial or a fungal infection be contagious? Because they are living things. A virus, remember, is not a living thing. It doesn't fucking matter. Nerve gas is not a living thing. It can still kill you. So how is it that a number of people can get a virus at the same time? There is an intelligence that runs through all of life. It's why seeds know when to germinate. It's why animals know when to mate or to hibernate or to come out of hibernation. Okay. So an unnamed, unseen, floating intelligence is why people get sick. An intelligence in nature um, goes into someone's body and says, hey, guy, all these other people around you are ill. Um, oh, wait, they're not ill. Their body's producing Drano. So now you need to produce Drano. But somehow, this intelligence that's able to contact your body through, I guess, invisible radio antenna, um, doesn't know uh, how to pick out somebody who could die from producing too much Drano in their body. So, it's, what, an animal intelligence? Is it a, a cosmic ethereal intelligence that knows, hey, it's just your time to join the fifth dimension? Is, is, that, is that what it is? You dumb fuck. So the body knows when it's a good time to undergo a cleaning, and it knows when it's a good time from the environment and climatic conditions. This is why a number of people in the same area can undergo a viral detoxification. Or... Or, and hear me out, I realize that I'm not someone who had to be interrogated. <laughs> I have to stop myself from laughing. I realize that I'm not someone who had to be interrogated um, by the IQ test practitioners of whatever kind of mental institution you were staying at. But maybe people in, a si in, in one room and one of them's sick, maybe those other people have a high chance of getting sick because the guy who's sick is coughing and spreading viruses through their exhalation that other people breathe in and that causes the same condition. And maybe that's why they get sick and not because some nature ghost contacts their body and tells them to make Lysol. But again, does everybody get a viral detoxification at the same time? You already know that the answer is no. So why is that? Well, they may have already undergone a recent cleansing. They may just be very healthy people, and they're always watching the way they eat, the way they think. Yeah, buddy, viruses don't care how you think. They got, they, they have, they don't give a shit about what's going on in here. They don't actually care about anything because they don't have thoughts. They, they just go inside adhere themselves to a cell and begin self and, and begin you know telling the cell to replicate that's all they do they don't stop by someone and scan their brain and go hmm i don't know i don't know if i can infect this guy he believes in tom barnett's bullshit i might not be able to infect him 
the way they move, the way they sleep, the intelligence that runs through all of life means that that body knows that it does not have to undergo a viral detoxification at that point in time. Yes, the nature ghosts, they, they go around with the little, little ghostly clipboard and they're like, hmm, you know, this person, has he gone through a detoxification? Has, has his body created enough Drano? Yes. Uh, has this guy, has he created enough Lysol? Yes. Has this guy created enough Harris Teeter knockoff drain cleaner? Yes. All right, well then, those guys aren't going to get infected. Everybody else, though, got to do the detox. So now you're all going to get double pneumonia and die. Additionally, our bodies all talk to each other. Yeah, dude. It's called talking. They talk with our mouths to people particularly our immune system. This is one of the ways that we're attracted to the opposite sex. We can sense their immune system. Okay, so the nature ghosts not only talk to our immune system and our cells and tell them to make solvents, but also determine, like, who we get a boner for? Is I just, I am trying to imagine, like, you're sitting in a room, some, some hot chick walks in, and I guess the invisible ghost is like, hmm. Yeah, she's made enough Drano up there. Here, let me grab this guy's dick. All right, there you go. It's how we know that we can create a genetically diverse offspring that will have the greatest chance of survival. You hear that, parents of any child that's had some kind of disorder or deformity? You should have listened to the nature ghosts, but you didn't. That's on you. We sense another's immune system partly by a scent. Hey guys, Cute Fuzzy Weasel here. I had to stop the act real quick because I took a moment during the edit to check on the claims this guy was making again. And as it turns out, the subject is a little more complicated than I initially thought, as it so often is. So birth control can mess with your sense of smell and it can cause variations in attractiveness. This is because like all things medical, birth control is not a one size fits all pill. Certain people do better on some kinds of birth control, whereas other people do better on a different kind of birth control. There is no just one pill to rule them all. And some aspects of the immune system can be conveyed through scent. However, someone's scent is not the only factor determining an offspring's health. Although, because it is not not a factor, I did feel the need to add this little piece in to explain the subject in greater detail. And of course, it goes without saying that even if scent is 100% the only way anybody has any ability to figure out whether or not the person they're attracted to is gonna give them a baby with like five arms or some shit, it has zero, nothing, absolutely no bearing on whether or not viruses are fake because birth control pills are birth control pills and viruses like COVID-19 are very, very real. So that's my addendum to the episode. Take it away past that's me. And while I can't condense more than 10 years of experience into a short video. How about instead of trying to condense 10 years of knowledge, into a 10 minute video, how about you go and do research that's not you just scrolling through Facebook posts, trying to find shit that already agrees with your wacko brain ideas. All right, so this video has gone on for a bit and I realize this is somewhat unprecedented. Well, it's not unprecedented, I just haven't done it in a while, but I'm gonna stop the video here and we'll pick this up again in a part two, yes. I'm splitting this into two parts because he's about to go into some shit that I actually have to research again. Though I should note that my research will be far, far more intensive than his because I will actually read what I find. Anyway, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the bell and the, and the, the subscribe, hit the subscribe first and then the bell will appear and then you hit the bell and then the bell does this little animation, and then you have to select from the menu, you have to select all. And then there'll be this legal form that you have to fill out um, explaining why you hit the button. Also, if you're one of my patrons, you saw this video two days early, like these people. Look at him go. Your support makes it so I can afford to 
not go out and potentially spread this horrible virus. And as always, have a good day, and I'll see you in either a couple of days or a week, depending on, on this thing.